Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we are going to start updating our Live View content. Now, Groxio was pretty early on the Live View train, and there's a couple of benefits to that. We got to show you some content pretty early, but there's also some drawbacks. You've probably noticed that the content is a little bit old, and some of the concepts have changed significantly. Well, we're going to update all of the Phoenix Live View module in the next couple of months, and we're going to start in three fundamental places. We're going to look at the HEEX templates called the HEEX templates. We're also going to look at stateful components and stateless components versus the new APIs in stateful components and functional components. And we're also going to look a little bit at live session. And that's just going to be the tip of the iceberg. It's going to be pretty exciting because Live View has moved a lot since we visited it. So it's going to be an exciting episode. Let's get busy. Okay, so I'm in the programmer passport directory. And let's change into the Live View one. Let's see what we have. Yeah, so this is the first application that we worked on together. It was a tiny little thing called Dazzle. And it was meant to capture the understanding of how a Live View loop works. Well, let's take a look at the code. So this is a live view program. And if you think of this in terms of CRC, that's a constructor, a reducer, and a converter. So this is the constructor, and all it does is set up the data. It adds a count of 20 to the data for this live view, the accumulator, which is just a socket. And actually, there's a special section in that socket that we that we work with. That's called the assigns. And the job of assign, this macro, it essentially puts data into the assign map within the socket. And so that's the constructor. All it does is set up the data. And it has a side effect, too. It starts sending timers at an interval. And then there's the reducer that we have. There's this handle info. And this is that same tick message that comes in from the timer. This tick message right here. And what's going to happen is at regular intervals, this tick is going to fire and it is going to pass us the current state of the server. And then if we'd like to, we can change the state of the server with the reducer right here. So all a reducer is is a function that modifies an accumulator. So this one happens to increment the data in the socket. So all I'm doing is assigning to count socket assigns count plus one. So this is our reducer. And the rest of this is all wrapped up in a converter. And I want to point out a couple of things here. The first is this sigil. So all tilde L is, is a function that's written by the folks who created LiveView. It's sigil underscore capital L. And all that does is it allows me to express data as a string or express my view as a string. And it processes the template in these, these angle percent equals brackets. These are interpolation uh, spaces for data that's within the assigns. So count is a key that's in the assigns. It's initially set here, and then the count is modified every time an event comes in. But one of the things that I want you to notice is that these two things are independent. I only have to express the render based on the data that is in assigns right now. And so that's how I show what's happening. And then this is how I change what's happening. And that's I, I can separate the concept of changing data in the socket from rendering data. And it's this separation in this tight little structured area that makes LiveView so strong. But this tilde L is something that is going to change. So in new versions, what you're going to see is a tilde H. Now, this was originally introduced in a library called Surface, but this H template would allow me to do things like catch misspellings. For example, if I were to get the H in the one backwards, this H sigil would actually 
catch that error and raise an exception when I try to render this thing. So the first major change that we're going to go over is this this H sigil, which is basically is a parsing for HTML data or this this style of structured data that you're you're going to render often in live views. So that's the first one. Along the way, one of the things that you're going to notice is that when we are inside of these attributes, these HTML attributes, the syntax is going to change for things like this. And, and we're actually going to do some type checking on, on these individual pieces. So we'll arrange things a little, little bit differently. And you'll see the syntax from this interpolation syntax within the um, EEX templates, this will change to something that looks more like this. Open, brace, and close brace like that. And there may be some other changes as well in, in terms of what we're allowed to do within that HTML tag. We'll get to that in, in the sessions to come. But I want to pay attention as our next major change. This is the Heeks template instead. And the second one is this one. So one of the things that you'll probably notice is that this is not HTML. So this is part of an HTML style where I have a rotation that I'm going to express inside here that's at some number of degrees. And this is a function that I have created. And if you'll notice, this function does not take a signs. And so this is actually a limited way to to improve the readability of your live views. I can use functions, but sometimes when you have pretty strong concepts like this one, this is a scrolling, a text scrolling component, probably a better thing to do in this case would be to set this up as a component. And you'll notice that I shied away from components in the early iterations of live view. Here's what I mean. So early iterations of Live View. Here we are back in 0.13.0. And one of the things that you'll notice is that this structure had stateless and stateful components. And the stateless components had a pretty heavyweight lifecycle. Actually expressing ideas took a lot of ceremony that I'd rather not have to live with. And so one of the things that you can do in later versions of Live View instead is to take advantage of Phoenix components. So Phoenix components will basically work inside and outside of Live View. But one of the things that's cool about it is that rather than thinking about a whole life cycle, all I do is express a function. And so here's an example of a function that shows a name. This show name takes an assigns which is part of the socket, which is part of the accumulator for a live view. And this allows me to express in a very lightweight way things that, well, all I needed was just a simple function. And it can allow me to organize my code in a beautiful way. So here I just take the assigns and then I express the component in this way. And so we're actually going to wind up refactoring some of this code, we're actually recreating some of this code in a different example that in cases like this, we'll take full advantage of function components. And as you might notice along the way, the stateless components are giving way to functional components, which can actually be applied all the way across Phoenix so that this effort that you go through can actually be shared across the different frameworks. So that's the second major change that we're making. So the third and final change that I want to tell you to pay attention to is this idea of a live session. So to actually look at live sessions, I'd like to take you to the code in the book that's that's being written by Sophie De Benedetto and myself. So this is the Pragmatic Programmer Live View. And we're going to get, so this is a beta version. And so we're going to check out the authentication version of the code. And we're going to look at this. Adam, give me a second. 
So this is the example from the book, and I want to point out a couple of things here. So we are in the authentication section of the book, and and so this is the lib. This is the Pinto application, which is the application that we're building in lib. We have the Pinto web, and we have the Pinto. We're going to drop into the Pinto web because I want to bring out the router. So one of the things that I want you to notice is that we go through the exercise in the book and in the Groxio videos of actually nailing down an authentication model for Phoenix. But one of the things that you might have noticed is that that authentication model doesn't fully handle situations where I have a live view session and I want to actually manage the session while the live view is in process. So another way to say this is that we want to build a concept for logging in that works like the authentication in phoenix.gen.auth. In phoenix.gen.auth, we have this new plug. And remember, a plug is just a reducer in our CRC framework or middle model. And this reducer is going to take a connection and return a connection. But that connection is based on the Phoenix model of request response. That does not do anything beyond open the gate and shut the gate based on whether a user is authenticated when the user first enters their live view. So if I had a, a setup like this, if the user was authenticated, they could get into wrong live, but we have no way to manage that user once the user is through. And since this view can last a long, long time, we probably want stricter a stricter way to manage authentication, which in previous iterations of Phoenix Live View, that meant that we were going to have to write some of our own code or use use one of several libraries. Well, instead, what we can do is actually use something called Live Session. Now, this has a similar function, but it will allow us to build our own live sessions. In our case, we build this one called user auth live. And you'll recognize that this is something that can fit on the live cycle. And when this thing is mounted, I can actually manage some data here. And then through some extra callbacks and extra events, I can manage the user actually in the, the living, breathing live view. And I can basically take more serious actions should I need to do so, because I basically have a user token to me that's available in the live view that I can then revoke at any point. And so that's gonna be a pretty important change, but we're not gonna to have to do a lot of work beyond writing our application policy for what's going to happen when I'm in an authenticated live view. So those are three things that I want you to pay attention to as we take our second pass through our live view content. The first one is the Heeks template. The second one is the functional component over stateless component. And the third is the live sessions. Now, that's not all the content that we want to cover, but these are the main details. That's an excellent thing. For Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.